Now, one thing that's important here is we're going to, so we're going to create a print queue of strings, but queue is an interface, so I can't say new queue. I can, however, use a linked list. But I don't want to call all the special linked list methods. I want that limited interface that's just the queue. And the way I can enforce that, and the way I can communicate to others that that's my intention, is the type of my variable can be a queue of strings. Because we can have variables be interface types, like we did with the list um, earlier in this unit. But then I have to say new linked list. I have to actually make a concrete class. But I'll assign it to a variable of type Q. So now if I try to do something like that's only a linked list thing, like in add at a specific index or something, um, or create an iterator, um, Java won't even let that compile because it's not part of the Q interface. All right, so we're going to pretend this print server is in an office. So we're going to add several print jobs. Um, up first is Joe. Joe prints expense report number one. Okay. The printer turns on, wakes up, starts warming up. Okay. While the printer is warming up, Kathy prints meaning memo. At this point, the printer is warmed up, and so the print server is like, oh, I'm going to print the first job in the queue. And so we'll kind of model that by just printing to the terminal, printing, and then we'll add in here jobs.remove. Jobs so we call the remove method, which removes the element at the head of the queue returns the value of that element, which we're just going to print to the terminal to like pretend we're printing it. That should be Joe's expense memo or expense report number one. While that's printing, I'm going to copy and paste this for a little less tedium. Joe does, or let's say Kathy decides to print purchase order number one. And the expense report is still printing. And Joe's like, well, I got to print expense report number two. So that goes into the queue. That's added to the tail of the queue. And then finally, Joe's like, oh, and I got this weekly report. I'm going to print that out. And finally, the printer finishes Joe's expense report number one. Yay. And it says, all right, what's next in the queue? It removes the next element at the head of the queue, and it prints that. And while Kathy's meeting memo is printing, Kathy's like, oh, wait, I got to print one more thing. She prints purchase order number two. And then Kathy and Joe go to lunch. And so now the printer is free to keep removing print jobs from the head of the queue and printing them out. And so very often when, when we're using like a queue data structure, um, another example of this would be like event-driven programming in an application. Something comes in over the network, someone clicks on a box, some character is pressed, some timer expires. Each of those things creates a little event object. You may remember this from, from AP Computer Science. That event object goes into a queue. It's, each event is added to the tail of the queue. There's an event loop running in the Java runtime, which removes the command object from the head of the queue and notifies all the listeners. And then it removes the next object from the head of the queue and notifies all of those listeners. And that's how event-driven programming works. So this is similar to that. We're going to just say print the rest of the jobs in the queue. And that's a great use of just a while loop. While jobs.size is greater than zero, while there are more jobs to print,
remove the job, print it. And just keep doing that as long as we can. And if you, once you've typed this, if you save it and run it, we can observe that the order in which things were printed is the order in which they were added to the queue, which is exactly what we'd want to expect. Imagine what would happen if instead of using a, a print queue, we had a print stack. And you went to print something. And then somebody else went to print something. And like, guess what? It's going to print their thing first because it's on the top of the stack. And then someone else prints something. And it's going to print their thing first because now they're on top of the stack. Your thing might never print. Or if it does ever print, it's going to be last. Um, so a stack isn't a good model for a print server. A queue is a good model. 